How do you tell the difference between boas and pythons, you ask? Well, one you'll see later, while the other one you see in a while. Wait. No, that's something else. Boas and pythons, regardless of their differences and similarities, I get asked without fail, probably once a show, whether I'm holding Maya, my big boa constrictor here, or one of my larger carpet pythons, is it going to try and eat me? Now the two families we're talking about today, Boaidae and Pythonidae, which are boas and pythons, have quite a few similarities. They're both non-venomous constrictors. I don't think I've ever heard of a boa or a python having venom or fangs. They both use their muscles and mass to help constrict and kill their food. They are both ambush predators for the most part. They are very not fast, so they're usually going to sit and wait for food to come to them. They're both found in a variety of biomes, both arid and tropical, ranging from arboreal to terrestrial or even fossorial. They are the world's like biggest snake species, with quite a few species from each group reaching over 10 feet in length, boas, anacondas, rock pythons, Burmese pythons, but more on that in a minute. Their older lineages of snakes, evolutionarily speaking, there's a few features that they have that other snakes lack. They have heavier skulls, less flexible jaws. They also have what's called spurs. Now they tend to be more prevalent on the boa species, but there's these little kind of like vestigial limbs. They're these little hook-like looking things on each side of the vent of the cloaca. And that's what's left behind from millions and millions and millions of years of evolving away their limbs. That's what's left behind of their legs. The males use these to tickle the female kind of when it's time to um but they also have their fair share number of differences so what separates the snakes of pythonidae from the snakes of boaidae well for starters one tried to eat jayla while the other tried to eat harry potter now for these differences there's going to be a few exceptions because i mean boas and pythons are such a diverse group of snakes found all over the planet all different sizes and biomes and stuff there's no exact cookie cutter guideline for this is what makes a python a python so they're not all going to follow the same rules i'm going to try my best and get all the differences i can but i might miss a few now one of the main differences is where you find them now just about all python species are found in what we call the old world which is africa australia and asia whereas boas are primarily new world which is north and south america now there is one python species that is an exception to this there is one python that is natively found over here on this side of the atlantic ocean in north america and that's called the mexican burrowing python it's the only python found over here naturally because there is a crap ton of invasive burmese pythons in florida but i'm not really counting those for boas there's quite a few exceptions though they're not all found in the new world one of which is the kenyan sand boa like calcifer here there's also viper boas and dumerals boas so there's a good number of boa species that are not in the new world so a good rule of thumb if you're walking around in the wild in north or south america and you're not sure if a snake is a boa or a python there is a very very good chance it is a boa whereas if you're walking around in africa or asia and you see a snake and you're not sure it's a little harder to tell this way as far as morphological differences go, pythons actually have a few extra bones that boas don't. Pythons have two extra upper jaw bones, and these actually come equipped with teeth. So technically, pythons actually have a few more teeth than boas do. Now most python species will have visible thermosensory pits like carpet pythons and ball pythons right along the upper or lower jaw. These are very distinct, very easy to see, and they use these to help them find food. Boas for the most part do not have these. One notable exception though is the arboreal boas like emerald tree boas. Just like there are boas that have the visible heat pits, there's also pythons that lack the visible heat pits, one of which being the black-headed python, which you folks have learned about in quite a few videos by now on the channel. I really hope you folks aren't sick of seeing her because she is definitely one of my favorite snakes that I have, of course, as you can tell, and I love showing her off. Now, overall, between the two families, again, overall, the pythons tend to grow bigger than the boas do. Now, there is one notable exception to this, and that is the green anaconda. I'm sure many of you have heard of it. It gets regularly 16 plus over 20 feet long. It is a very massive reptile. But outside of the anaconda species and the boas, like the really big boas, like red tail boas, most boa species don't get over 10 feet in length. Whereas pythons, there are quite a few members that can get over 10 feet in length. Scrub pythons, carpet pythons, like Roku here, You've got your reticulated python, which is the world's longest snake, rock pythons, you've got Burmese pythons. There are quite a few python species that can get very excessive in length compared to the boas. 
Perhaps the biggest difference is their reproduction. Pythons are what we call ovoviparous, which is what most reptiles are, and this means that they actually physically lay eggs. Now with pythons, usually the female will wrap around the eggs to help incubate them, and there's a few different methods as the babies are kind of developing in those eggs. Some species will actually vibrate their body lightly to give off some warmth that way. Other snakes, like ball pythons, will actually go out and bask in the sun, absorb that body heat, go back into their nest, wrap around the eggs, and transfer the heat that way to help incubate them. And then after X amount of days, little baby pythons hatch out of the eggs and they're off on their own. Boas, for the most part, are what we call viviparous, which means they are live-bearing, they have live young, kind of like Onyx, my rosy boa right here. Now, they still do have an egg, but the egg is never hatched and it never calcifies or hardens. It actually stays inside mom's body until the babies are ready to go. The babies will hang out in these little amniotic fluid sacs and they'll develop in there. And then when it comes time for the babies to kind of hatch out, they'll break out of those and they'll come out of mom all ready to go, little babies ready to look for food and avoid predators and all that stuff. Now, there are a few boa species that do lay eggs, but again, nature is chaos and nothing obeys all the rules. So those were a few ways that boas and pythons were similar and different with a few of my python and boa species. I am joined now by Dakan my jaguar carpet python, who you will be meeting very soon in our second Into the Wild Australia video. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on that or any of the other animal videos I post weekly. Like the video if you learned something and comment down below if you have a bow or a python or which you prefer. Thanks for tuning in and I'll catch you later. Pre which, no, they, oh, no. Oh, come here, Maya. No. Oh my God, Maya. Oof. Of the two groups, for the mo no, get out on the table. Come on, Roku. What are you latched onto down there? There we go. Come on, dude. Now, of the two, no, 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 no.